So, hi everyone, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Victoria Tomas, and I will present to you today for my project about whole transcriptome as a diagnostic tool for AML patients. So, diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia uh, is complex and consists of severe tests such, such as morphology, karyotype, fish, and DNA sequence. The arrival of next generation uh, enables the rapid and cost-effective sequencing of entire genomes, exomes, and transcriptomes. With this, genomic profiling has become an indispensable uh, tool for diagnosis and risk stratification of this disease. However, the role of uh, whole transcriptome is in AML diagnosis is not well established. So we have some limitations in karyotype tests, that is the detection of cryptic and rare abnormalities, and we have the high dependency of expertise in this test. In transcriptome, we have some potential advancement compared to karyotype, that was the detection of substitutions, endows, gene fusions, alternative splicing, gene expression profiling in a single assay. This study was a multicenter study, uh, with uh, uh, samples shipped from four states uh, to central laboratory at Hospital Albert Einstein in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Most samples had cytogenetics and molecular analysis at diagnosis of the patients, for example, karyotype and uh, detection of mutations in genes FLP3, NPM1, and CBPAFA. We performed bone marrow or PBMC whole transcriptome and exome in all samples at diagnosis. This is the genus uh, used for variant calling. Uh, this is the genus selected for analysis. Uh, there are 14, six genes that are very re relevant for pathogenesis and prog uh, prognostic of AML. And for the classification of these variants, we use clean gene, CGC, VIT, uh, oncogenesis guideline. In this project, our aim was to evaluate the potential clinical use of transcriptome sequencing for diagnosis and risk stratification of AML when compared to whole exome sequencing plus karyotype. For the selection of the samples, we sequence 126 whole transcriptomes and 104 whole exomes from patients with AML. Of these patients, 98 had both transcriptome and exome. But in the in initial of the research, we decided to uh, exclude eight samples initially because they had poor alignment quality. For example, they had less than 10 million reads on the RNA mapping. So our analysis was restricted to 90 samples with exome and transcriptome. This is some uh, steps of the methodology uh, we do for all the samples, the 90 samples. Quality control and samples normalizations. We do dimensionally the uh, reduction by principal component analysis. And we do variance and gene fusion calling in all the samples of RNA seq The bioinformatics pipeline that we used was FASTQC for quality control. You star for RNA mapping, BWA for, uh, for DNA mapping, RSAM software we use to calculate the expression in RNA samples, like count, TPM, FPKM, by genes or isoforms. In our nasal, we decided to do for by genes. For variant calling, you, uh, we use Mutecti2 and Aplotype color, and for the annotation, we use ANOVAR. For the detection of gene fusions, we use Ariba. After doing the variant calling and the gene fusion calling uh, for do the classification and risk, uh, risk certification and diagnosis, we use uh, the European Leukemia Nest last update for do that for AML samples. And here I, I will start uh, showing some preliminary results because it's a still undergoing study. 
This first, re first result is the principal component analysis of all the samples, clustering the 90 samples from the gene expression profile. As uh, we can see in the first figure, we have three groups, and this group in red is the samples that had uh, a number below that uh, 20, uh, 20 million reads that, uh, we, as we can see, cluster reads separate of the others, so this is outliers for our analysis. So we decided to exclude it, this, uh, these samples. So after excluding, uh, we can see in the figure two that we have a homogeneous clustering with samples that have at least 20 million reads. So for other analysis like variant calling and gene fusions, uh, we decided to do with only 72 samples. So this is some variant calling findings that we, we have. Uh, interestingly, uh, no SMC1A mi uh, missense variants were detected in the transcriptome sequence. We have some difficulty with this detection. But previous reports have documented a similar findings that are some uh, papers in literature uh, talking about this too. So excluding SMC1 variants, the concordance between in, uh, transcriptome and exome in detection of variants was 87%. And the other discrepancies uh, is because the discrepancies were due to subclinal mutations, regions of low coverage, and a subset of loss of mutation, uh, loss of function mutations. This is a table with some fusions detection. Uh, the 16 uh, in blue are canonical fusions. The, the three, oops. Uh, these three in orange are rare fusions that are describing literature in one or two cases. And these three in purple was new fusions that's not uh, yet described on literature. Here is the AML classification of the uh, 72 samples. This is a, a chart with the proportion of the patients in each diagnosis. Here we use the karyotype and whole exome for doing this classification. And here we have the, class, uh, the classification for the same samples, but now using only whole transcriptome. We have similar proportions, uh, but we have three, uh, three finds that we don't have in uh, karyotype that, uh, that is, are these three fusions. This one uh, failed karyotype because it was shipped from another state, so the quality sample is not so good and uh, have absence of met metaphysis. When we compare the exome plus karyotype versus, uh, with transcriptome, we have similar proportion of patients in each diagnosis. Here uh, we can see again the three fusions that only transcriptome detect, and here some discrepancy uh, uh, with these two diagnoses, AML TP53 and AML uh, MDS. In our samples, we have discrepance diagnosis, four discrepance diagnosis because we have three canonical fusions detected only in transcriptome, and we have a subclonal TP53 mutation with allele frequency 13% that uh, is not detected by transcriptome. And this is the three fusions. Here we have uh, uh, the risk stratification of the uh, 72 samples. Uh, as we can see, is a very similar proportion. We have just two cases that uh, is a discrepant results in risk stratification. So the conclusions for our work uh, is still here is AML classification was concordant in 95% of cases when transcriptome se sequencing and exome plus cytogenetics was compared. AML in risk stratification was concordant in 97% of cases. Transcriptome had a decreased sensitive to, uh, for a subset of uh, loss of function, subclonal mutations, and SMC1A uh, missense variants. This technique led to the identification of a rare gene fusions missed by karyotyping. And as we can see in the figure in PCA in the beginning of the presentation, 
a minimum of uh, 20 million reads, uh, ideally more, uh, if can possible, is necessary for the analysis and have good uh, re results. So with this work, uh, we can see that transcriptome is a good tool for diagnosis and risk stratification of AML. This is the acknowledgments, and thank you. <laughs>